welcome back to our homestead. Today I would like to share with you my very simple recipe of salsa. It's so good to open that jar of salsa in the middle of the winter and serve it with crackers or with chips or on the side of any other meal really it's really good to kind of embellish that protein chicken or beef whatever it's going to be so so good right so i've got some really good peppers that i've grown this year really good peppers and i have some basic uh, peppers and some little hot peppers okay so those are good to go into this salsa and i have some tomatoes okay now the plum tomatoes i prefer to use because they're a little bit less runny cool exorani salsa right then i've got some onion i've got basic white ones and i have some red onions so you may choose to put just white onions or red onions that's fine but i like to mix it up then what else do we need we're gonna need some cilantro and i have a big bunch of cilantro garlic and i have lots of garlic in here i'm going to list ingredients for one batch in the description okay it's going to be all in description but as you guys know me if you've been following me for some time you know i always multiply and i make a lot um so also we're going to be needing some vinegar and this is five percent basic vinegar i'm going to need some salt i have some salt here i'm going to need a little bit of sugar okay i'm going to need some sugar here and i'm going to be using ground cumin and ground coriander if you don't like cumin and if you don't like coriander you may omit but i find that they add very nice flavor to my salsa so the first step i'm going to be working on the tomatoes and what i'm doing is just i'm removing the little uh, pot at the top and making a little cross on the bottom and i have some boiling water here that i'm going to be dumping them into for blanching and the reason why i'm going to be blanching them is because i want to remove the skins okay and this is going to just take just for a couple of minutes and i'm going to remove the skins because i want my salsa without any skins basically so this has been blanching for a couple of minutes and the skins already getting nice and loose and i'm just going to take them out and let them cool off before I actually touch them because they're very hot and I want to make sure that I don't get burned. All right, literally just a couple of minutes for them to loosen up their skins so I can peel them off nicely. And I'm gonna put in ooh, the next batch in. The next step is I need to prepare my peppers. And if you have followed me for some time, you know that I don't throw away these tops. That is very wasteful in my in my book very wasteful i grew up saving food that needs to be saved and um, so i'm just removing the seeds making sure they're nice and clean and ready for slicing because that's what we're going to be doing now i'm going to be using some of these banana peppers and they do have a little bit of heat don't get me wrong they're not super strong hot but they do have some heat so if you like your salsa to be spicy go ahead use them in you can even use the seeds inside of these banana peppers but i'm gonna put my gloves on because i already learned my lesson my hands will burn after so i'm just trimming everything so this one i'm not gonna save because it's no good because it's from my garden so i'm just gonna be working on my peppers for some time All right, so here are my spicy peppers. And again, if you like, you can leave the seeds and the veins in, but I'm gonna make my salsa a little mild because I don't like it very spicy. So I'm gonna take out the veins and I'm gonna take out the seeds. I still wanna get the flavor and the aroma of hot peppers, but not too, too much heat, all right? So I'm just gonna prep those as well. My little banana pepper here. It's not always easy to clean that guy because it's so narrow, but it's all right. I'll get it done. All right, I'm just gonna clean it a little bit as well, just like this. All right, but again, if you guys like it spicy, hey, more power to you. Put in all the veins and all the seeds in there, okay? So let all me right, the going. next step, I'm gonna start working on my onions and I have some white onions and i'm going to be using red onions as well 
So, hey, again, if you have followed me for some time, you know that I do not throw away onion peels. I save them for the time when I have to make my bone broth or my meat broth, and I put them in a Ziploc bag. I'm gonna put them in a Ziploc bag just like this, and I'm gonna store them in the freezer until I need them, all right? So don't throw away your good organic peels. So here I am peeling, removing the skins, and the skins for the most part come out very, very easily. And the reason why I started removing skins and blanching them because I wanna show you something. Do you see this pot where I put the blanch? Do you see all this liquid that's coming out? That liquid that we do not want in, in salsa. In the past, I've never done this before and I was kind of just, oh yeah, no, just take the fresh and cut the fresh and with skins and all. But what was happening is that a lot of my salsa were coming out runny and I am not a big fan of runny salsa. So that is why this time, I know it's a little bit more time consuming. I know it's an extra step. I'm aware of that. It's definitely slowing down my process. But here I am taking off the skins because look at this one, it's full of liquid because those are the extra liquid that's coming out of tomatoes that would have been in my salsa. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna start chopping the vegetables. And I have this beautiful little chopper that my kids gave me a few years back and I'm still using it. So I have this wide chopping block and I have a narrow looking chopping block like this. So this one I'm gonna be using for onions because I like the onions to be nice and fine. But peppers and tomatoes, I'm gonna try to have them chunky. And I'm gonna, as I'm cutting everything, I'm gonna put into my big measuring cup because I need to know how much I have. So, because for my recipe, which I'm gonna leave in the bottom, in the description box, I'm gonna mention exactly how much I'm using of what, okay? So, I'm gonna make a noise. There it goes, look how fast. It cuts my chopping time in, <laughs> in half the time at least, or maybe even more. Look how cool. Done. Done, I love it. So all I'm doing is I'm just cutting the pepper in half and chopping it into big chunks because I do like chunky salsa. If you like fine salsa, then you may wanna use a smalling chopping grade, uh, grade like this, but I'm using a big one. All right, all of my peppers are chopped and now they are in this large 15 quart pot where I'm gonna be making the salsa. So all of the peppers are here. And now I'm just gonna take over and start chopping the tomatoes and that should be super easy. Just push it down and they go down very, very easily because they'll be super soft. All right, so now I'm gonna be using this much smaller grid. I put that in and there's a little level here to lock it so it's in place so I can keep chopping things smaller. And now I'm gonna be chopping smaller my hot peppers because again, you don't wanna bite into a gigantic piece of pepper. I'd rather have little pieces of it. All right, and hot peppers go all together with all the other ingredients. And now I'm gonna be chopping the onion. All right, and all the onions are here. All right, so at this point, I probably should be working on the garlic and cilantro because it's best that it's also chopped up. And I have lots of garlic here. I like my salsa very garlicky. So either we can chop it or we can use this old fashioned little garlic press like this. It's gonna make my job much, much easier. I'm just gonna press it all in here. All right, the garlic is in. All right. So um, let's see, let me just scoop all this stuff out that's inside because I don't want to lose all that good garlic goodness. All right, so at this point I could um, work on the cilantro, chopping the cilantro, and I'm gonna put this up on a stove to start cooking. Beautiful, beautiful cilantro. All these beautiful colors are in here. Lots of red, lots of green. Lots of vibrant yellow, absolutely gorgeous. All right, let me turn the heat on and we're gonna start cooking. Once it comes to a boil, 
I'm going to cook it all together for 10 minutes, be well, maybe 15. 15 minutes before I'm gonna put them in my sterilized jars. So um, let's talk about seasonings, okay? Salt and pepper and everything else. Now, because I already put some hot peppers in here, I'm not gonna be adding crushed black pepper. But if you did not put any hot peppers in here, adding some black pepper is not a bad idea. All right, so I am making a lot of batches here, but for one batch, it is a good idea to add some salt. Let me grab the salt here. And for one batch, we need one tablespoon of salt. And like I said, because I'm making multiple batches, I'm gonna be adding more salt, okay? And then we need sugar in here. Now you don't have to put sugar, but I am gonna put a little bit, and I usually don't put as much as the usual recipes talk about. So I'm gonna be putting just a little bit of sugar in here because it works well with tomatoes. All right, so I have some sugar in here. And I'm gonna be putting my spices, and I have um, cumin and coriander. So I'm gonna be putting about a teaspoon, about a teaspoon, oh, it doesn't fit. All right, about a teaspoon per batch because I have three batches in here. All right, I'm gonna be putting three. All right, it's gonna add a nice flavor. Okay, now it's, mmm, cumin, nice and fresh cumin. All right, one. Come on, a little bit more. Ooh, that's probably three, because extra fell out. Okay, let me stir everything together, and I'm gonna bring it to a boil. Now, I also need to add vinegar, all right? And I like in this recipe to use basic white vinegar, all right? And for each batch, you need half a cup of white 5% acidity vinegar. Let me stir everything together and I'm gonna be adding the vinegar. All right, vinegar, here it comes. Vinegar is so versatile. You can do so many things with vinegar. You can cook it with vinegar, disinfect with vinegar. You can do so many things with vinegar. There it goes. The vinegar is in. Okay, friends, if you've been watching up until now, thank you. You didn't drop out from the video because now I'm gonna show you a secret. A secret to make your salsa thicker. And here's my secret, tomato paste. Tomato paste, I'm gonna be adding, this is my organic tomato paste I have. I'm gonna be adding now, it's just begin boiling, and I'm gonna put it in now, and it's gonna thicken up that salsa, and it's not gonna be runny. So thanks for watching. I've been noticing that a lot of people stop watching certain videos at certain time in the video, and I'm like, why are they doing that? Why don't you wanna watch till the end? Well, and this is an example why it is good to stay to the end of the show because here I'm gonna be showing how I make my salsa thicker, all right? So the, um, per batch, we're gonna be needing 12 ounces of tomato paste. All right, this, my beautiful salsa is ready. Look how thick it is, look how vibrant. Isn't that awesome? All right, so here I have my sterilized jars. They're nice and hot, and it's very important that if my content of salsa is hot, I have to put them in hot, sterile jars as well. And today I'm gonna to be using these lids by Four Jars Canning Lids, wide mouth. And the instructions are in the back how to use them. It says, wash the jars, lids, and bands in a hot water, which I've done. Place lids in a saucepan and cover with water, which I did. They're sitting over here, I don't know if you guys can see that and bring it to a simmer, which I did. The only thing is that this company doesn't say how long to simmer them for. So I simmered them for about 
three minutes. I think it's enough. And then um, they recommend it for one time use only, which that's what I do. And it says that it's good for 18 months or more. So let's see how this company pays out. I'm gonna be using this, like I said, again, four jars, lids, and uh, yeah, BPA free, rust proof. It says American brand. So anyway, all right, let's take a look. So I'm gonna be uh, filling them up and I'm just, just have a big, big measurement cup that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be filling up my jars with this beautiful salsa. Oh, you know what I just forgot to do? Hold on a second, give me five seconds. I forgot to put my, there it is. Making a mess. Look how much simpler it is now, huh? So you fill this up and I'm gonna be doing probably about, um, an inch of head space and I already see that it's too much in here I'm gonna have to scoop some of it out but anyway I'm gonna be filling them up and I already have a canner going it's sitting there prepping it's gonna be hot boiling as well for the water bath canning so just a quick review that water bath canning is for acid foods foods that have either lots and lots of sugar like jams or for foods that have vinegar in it. And this food has vinegar. As always, I like to take paper towel and some vinegar on it and just run the sides to make sure they clean, especially the first one that I made all that mess with. Clean it all up so it has a good seal. All right, run on the edges, making sure that the edges are clean and there is no sharp, edges anyway because if there is guess what it's not going to seal okay so it's important that the jar has a nice edge just like this all right i'm just going to run them and i'm going to be putting my hot sterilized lids and rings all right so after i do my processing okay I'm going to leave them to cool off completely to cool off on my kitchen counter. All right. And they're going to, oh, it's hot. Careful. The one thing that we have to remember that canning can be dangerous because it's hot. Whew. So um, I'm going to let them sit on my counter and completely cool off. And I'm going to be hearing this ping sound, ping, ping. And that means that, that, I don't know if you guys can see that on the video, but right at the top right now, there's like a little like bevel kind of like sticking at the top. When the jar is sealed, that little heel, that little bevel will disappear and it's gonna be actually concave, okay? And it's gonna be nice and firm attachment on, on the jar, all right? So, um, after 24 hours, I am going to remove the rings. I'm not going to keep the rings on, okay? Because rings can give you a false reassurance that the seal is good. So it's important that I do not keep the rings on. I'm going to be removing the rings. Oh, I need to wipe this one. So I ran out of jars. So I made a gigantic quart. I am now going to be processing that quart. I'm going to actually let, uh, let it sit, cool off, and then I'm going to put it in the fridge. And we're going to be eating it now. I'm not going to be canning this for winter months. All right. So let me put the rings on, and it's going to be finger tight. Finger tight, that means I'm just tightening it with my fingers. It's not machine tight, okay? And that's it, my friends, for now. All right, my canner is boiling. My jars are ready to go in. And it's important that the jars are covered at least with an inch of water on top. And now I'm gonna be waiting for this to come to a boil, which is not gonna take that long because everything is hot. And I'm gonna set my timer for 15 minutes, one, five, 15 minutes, because the processing time for pines for salsa is 15 minutes. All right, friends, so the last batch is sitting in the canner right now, processing. 
but here is the result of my simple salsa recipe. Pretty soon I'm going to start he uh, hearing those pins sound like ping, 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 and that meaning that their ceiling and that little um, concave thing at the top will be sealing under. Right now it's still concave, it's still there. Um, it's coming any minute, so I'm not going to wait, I'm going to record it. And like I said, in 24 hours, whilst it's completely cooled down and rested on my counter, I'm going to take the rings off and I'm going to store them, I'm going to label of course, and I'm going to store them in the cool placement place in my basement. That's where I, I keep my most of my canning goods. So friends, I hope you are encouraged to make your own homemade salsa. And I hope you caught on to my little trick that I shared how to make it thicker. So friends, be encouraged and try something new.